We join Voyager 2 on the final visit of its 12-year grand tour of the outer solar system, Neptune, the Blue Giant. Voyager has traveled over 7 billion kilometers to reach its final planet. From 4 million kilometers, we look down on Neptune, its large moon, Triton, and its small distant moon, Nereid. Soaring from our lofty perch, we descend to just in front of Voyager. The spacecraft camera pans left to Nereid, about which almost nothing is known. These are the best images Voyager will take of the moon. Nereid is so small that we must take animator's license, zooming in by a factor of 20 to reveal its features. As the observation concludes, we pan back to Neptune. At four times the size of Earth, and 30 times farther from the sun, the last gas giant is a cold, mysterious world. We begin uncovering its secrets by examining its upper atmosphere. Neptune may possess partial rings called ring arcs, the likes of which have never been seen before. We zoom in to study one arc in detail. Voyager's camera tracks the arc as it orbits Neptune. Observing how ring particles deflect incoming starlight is the most sensitive ring study technique known to man. The star Sigma Sagittarii provides the means to uncover the secrets of the incomplete rings. Occasionally, a ring arc blocks the starlight revealing arc dimensions and internal structure. Usually, the arcs are in the wrong position. Undoubtedly, a few will come tantalizingly close. About an hour before closest approach, we pass immediately above the ring arc region. As Voyager makes a traverse, it measures and records multitudes of tiny ring particle impacts. Then, almost brushing Neptune, we skim over the planet's cloud tops, avoiding them by only the distance between Los Angeles and New York. The spacecraft rolls to realign its instruments. Then, we turn our attention to Triton. Triton is equally as fascinating as Neptune. Roughly the size of our own moon, Triton is one of only two satellites in the solar system known to have its own atmosphere. In addition, it orbits backwards around Neptune. These features make Triton unique amongst all moons. Our highest resolution pictures of the surface of Triton are provided by this 12-image mosaic. we pass within 38,500 kilometers of the surface. Triton occults the sun and Earth, providing the opportunity to probe the moon's atmosphere and to measure its diameter. After rolling to the star Canopus, we take a departing wide-angle crescent shot of the sunlit south pole of Triton. The first grand tour has ended. But Voyager's legacy will continue as it ventures beyond the solar system into the vastness of interstellar space. There, having paced upon the heavens overhead, it hides its face amidst a crowd of stars.
This polar view shows cloud patterns on Neptune as photographed by the Voyager spacecraft. The frames are centered on the South Pole with latitudes displayed as circles. The effect is to illuminate the planet uniformly. Winds cause features near the equator, like the great dark spot, to rotate slower. These features move counterclockwise. Faster moving features, like the small bright scooter, move clockwise. Colorization produces hues that approximate those seen by the human eye. The equatorial view of the weather on Neptune is divided into two parts. In each part, the equator is near the top, and the South Pole is below the lower edge. Latitudes are horizontal lines. The effect is to unwrap the planet and display all longitudes at once. Features like the great dark spot move in longitude and appear alternately in the upper and lower halves. Missing frames cause the features to jump. This movie shows cloud patterns on Neptune as seen by the Voyager spacecraft over a 68-day period. The individual frames of the movie are views of the planet at 17-hour, 52-minute intervals. This interval approximates the Neptunian day. However, winds cause the atmosphere to rotate up to 3% slower near the equator and up to 10% faster near the South Pole. Therefore, near-equatorial features like the great dark spot and the neighboring bright clouds drift to the left in the movie. Proceeding southward, features like the small bright scooter, the faint dark spot, and the bright polar cloud all drift to the right. The movie uses images from the orange filter of the narrow-angle camera. Colorization produces hues that match those seen by the human eye.